Let's talk about density analysis. This is another way to turn your point data into raster data. When we're mapping density, we are mapping, we are creating a density surface, so a raster output, where we can show where our point or line features are concentrated. So in this example, we are going to be looking at the concentration of potholes reported in District 3 of San Diego. Um, this data was pulled from the 311 data that San Diego has um, available online. We can use this data to understand the distribution of potholes and see parts of District 3 that have a large concentration of potholes when this data was downloaded. We will look at two different density tools to consider where the potholes are in relation to other potholes um, and how many cells in our output raster need to share a portion of the potholes um, uh, to create a, uh, a density or a higher proportion of, of those potholes. We are going to look at two point density tools. First, we'll look at point density, then we'll look at kernel density. You can, of course, look at, um, there's also a line density tool that we are not looking in this analysis. Okay, so let's start with our first tool, point density. Now, density tools are all going to have a kind of complicated definitions, so I'll break it down a little bit. Um, I'll give you their definition, and then I'll uh, talk about when, uh, the neighborhoods and things they're, they're referencing. So point density is calculating, here I can pull this up so you can see it, it is calculating the magnitude per unit area from point features that fall within a neighborhood around each cell. So that neighborhood is what we are going to define. That's going to define how far from that point we're going to consider um, uh, a neighborhood or uh, we're going to, in each neighborhood, uh, like you can see here, we have them as a circle. We haven't set the radius yet, but within each circle that we, that the computer is drawing on the map around a cell, it's going to count how many potholes fall within that um, output cell. All right, so let's first make sure we've set our environments. We want to make sure we have our output coordinate system. Um, oops, I'll set from now. We're going to make District 3 our mask and our processing extent. Okay, go back to our parameters. Our input will be our potholes. We're not worrying about population. This would be if you had a value, but right now we're just looking at location. Um, let me set this was set as point density. Um, and the output cell size, we will go ahead and just leave it as a default for now. Um, this you could change based on your um, input data or uh, other data in your um, um, in your uh, data set. So we are looking at um, the uh, next up we have to set the neighborhood. So let's look at that. So we are not adding a population field because, like I said, we're just concerned about where um, we're just finding the density of pothole reports. We don't want to weight any of these potholes more important than others. We don't have any weights um, in our, our attribute table. Um, so we have our radius here. This is the default, um, and this is in our map units, which are feet, I believe. Um, so let's see what 900 feet is. All right, so 911 feet is about point one seven of a mile, so less than point two, uh, less than a quarter of a mile. Um, we can increase the the radius if we wanted to. We could change the the shape of our radius. Right now, we're sticking with circles. Um, if we increase the radius, that means we're going to have more points um, within the neighborhood, but it's also being divided by a larger area. So. Um, it will be including more points that are further from our output cell. Um, it will give us a more generalized raster. So for now, we're just going to stick with the default. I think less than a quarter of a mile, 0.17 of a mile is pretty good um, for a distance. We can measure that. Let's zoom in. Um, so we're for 900 feet. 
All right, so we're at about the night. We'll just say it's right around there. So this is 900 feet. Uh, is it even further? Um, so it's a couple city blocks, and um, we can make it smaller too if we wanted to. But we'll just stick with the 900 feet. Um, the defaults for now. Okay, so our area unit is um, telling us um, how our density is being reported in our output. Um, so since this data is in feet, um, our ca desired calculated density is in square miles. So this is the scale factor that it's using to convert the feet to um, um, square miles. So uh, that is what you're looking at there. Um, that's all happening behind the scenes. Um, we can go ahead and click Run. You'll see when the, the, the analysis is completed, you'll get, oops, let me zoom. You'll get a raster surface showing the output. Um, and you can see the darker the purple, the more dense the uh, uh, potholes are. This does look a little bit different from um, the output that you'll see on the um, help pages. Um, and it's mostly because they have pulled it into these classified values. I did switch it over to, uh, although I didn't do this one to the extent of the study area. So let's turn this back on and let me switch to symbology really quickly. Okay, so I switched the symbology to stretch, um, and that'll give us uh, values everywhere on our surface, just so you understand that the output you're getting does have values, uh, does have a grid cell for every output. Um, but you can see those darker grid cells is where it's calculating um, a, a higher density. So what street is this if there's this high density? Um, So we're seeing right around, what is this, in Hillcrest, Washington, and the 163, seeing a lot of pothole reports um, in there. Um, you can see some others uh, through downtown and other major roads. Um, now, if I were to display this on the map, I probably would just put high density and low density. These values don't necessarily mean anything for the average um, person. Um, we're just, you know, it's kind of complicated to explain the density uh, points per neighborhood per area. So I just tend to put high and low density. Um, our next tool is kernel density. Let's talk about our kernel density tool. Our kernel density tool, like our um, point density tool, is calculating a magnitude per unit area from point or polyline features using a kernel function to fit a smoothly tapered surface to each point line, uh, point or line. Um, and we can use a barrier to influence the output. So we could use, um, you know, uh, we could use major streets if we wanted to, or big canyons if we knew that there wasn't that relationship apart, uh, a relationship across the canyon for potholes. Probably something we should be doing, but keeping it simple for this analysis. Notice that main difference is it's using a different function, which is the, the process behind the, the density calculation um, to calculate the output. And we'll get a little bit of a smoother surface. Let's quickly set some environments. Where's my crossing extent? Oh, no, that's all I wanted to use. Um, District three. District three. Okay. And we'll use our inputs. We'll leave that uh, population field the same since we're not using anything in the value. Leave everything else the same. Um, we're not going to use the search radius right now. We're going to keep the area units the same. Um, uh, we're just going to leave it as a default, default for cell values and the method that we're calculating them. So we can see here that that didn't take very long. And again, we are still seeing our symbology displayed as classes. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly change that to our stretch. We'll change the color scheme to match our point density so we can see the difference. Okay. 
And this. And da da da. That looks good. Okay. All right. So let's look at our output. So again, we have our output cells that are calculating density. You can see it is quite a bit smoother than our um, smoother meaning uh, it, with the point density, we're getting the circles versus that sort of smooth heat map type experience you might be interested in. So point density, we're definitely seeing those neighborhood circles um, being displayed there with kernel density since, well, we didn't set it as search density, but we're, the neighborhood circles are, the neighborhoods are less obvious or the search radius is not as um, um, defined as that, that circle. What else? We still see those pockets of density. We are seeing a bit different. We're seeing um, um, how these density pockets in downtown and where is... Oh, let's turn this one off. Um, what is that? Um, oh gosh, Bangor Hill? I don't know. Um, we're still seeing uh, those densities pop up but maybe a little bit um, clearer than we saw in those point density layers. Um, so that's a quick overview of the two density tools. Um, I think kernel density usually gives a little bit smoother, cleaner of a display, but you have a little bit more control over your point density tools. Again, same idea with the output here. I just renamed these high density and low density of potholes. Um, is there anything else that we wanted to talk about? I think that's it. Those are your just quick overview of some of the density tools that you can use in ArcGIS Pro.